Say our cursor is on line 13 of this file, and we notice a mistake 13 lines below that where it says builder.setCertificateChain file. We realize the function is actually called setCertificateFile instead of setCertificateChainFile, so we need to remove the word chain. In traditional Vim, there's two main ways to do this. The first is a search. So I would do slash chain, enter, press N three times. And now I'm there, and from there I can just do df underscore to remove the word chain. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to jump down 13 lines and then use the F motion to find occurrences of the letter C and then just iterate until we get to the C that we want. So for that, it'd be 13J and then FC. That's not the C we want, so we're gonna do semicolon. That's not the C we want either. Semicolon again, and finally we're at the C that we want and we can do DF underscore and delete the word chain. The first option I showed you is actually eight keystrokes. And the second option is seven keystrokes. Now let's check out a NeoVim plugin called Leap that allows me to do the exact same thing in only four keystrokes. When I initiate a search with Leap, it's gonna want me to specify two characters. The first character is the character that we want our cursor to land on. And the second character is the character immediately preceding that character. So in this case, that's gonna be CH. And of course, there's gonna be a lot of occurrences of CH potentially in the file after my cursor. So Leap uses something called labels to disambiguate where I'm trying to go. So if I do S, and then C, the first character, you can see it already has some labels on the screen. And it has a label for every place that a C occurs because it doesn't know what that second character that I'm gonna type is yet. The reason it does this is so I can look at where I'm trying to go, chain, and I can already see the label for chain. And that label is not gonna change after I type the second character. What does happen after I type the second character is that some of the labels go away because I've disambiguated where, where I'm trying to go. At this point, it doesn't need a label for every occurrence of C because I've narrowed down where I'm trying to go. I'm saying I wanna to go to somewhere that's CH. And so at this point, it has a label for every occurrence of CH except the first one. Because if you're trying to go to the first one, all you need to type is SCH and you're already there. If you wanna to go to any occurrence other than that first one, you'll need to type the label for the one that you wanna to go to. In our case, that's N. So I can type N and I'm there. The second option we looked at where I jump down 13 lines actually makes me take my eyes off of where I'm trying to go because I have to go look at the relative line numbers and figure out how many lines to jump down. And so that might hinder me from thinking about the action that I'm gonna perform next once I get to chain. With leap, I can keep focusing on where I'm trying to go and start thinking about what action I'm gonna perform next after my cursor is there. So that's another huge advantage. There have been some plugins like this in the past. For the original Vim, there was something called Vim Sneak and then for NeoVim, there was something called Lightspeed, which was actually written by the same author as Leap. I haven't actually tried either of those plugins, but from the demos that I've seen, Leap seems to improve on them in a few ways. Number one is that it doesn't obfuscate what you're trying to jump to. So with those plugins, if I was jumping to CH, it might superimpose a label on top of CH. To me, that seems a little confusing. Leap leaves the characters that you're trying to jump to unchanged and it actually puts the label on the third character. So if you're jumping to CH, it's gonna put the label on the A, preceding CH. The other way that Leap improves on previous versions of this sort of plugin is that it shows me the label before I type that second character. And that allows me to be prepared to type it so I can type the entire thing faster. So when I do SC, I can already see that the label is going to be N, even though Leap doesn't know what the second character is gonna be yet. Mentally, that helps me prep. So before I even type H, I already know that the third character I need to type is N, so I can type it much faster. Boom, I'm there. There's a few other nuances of Leap that I wanna cover, one of which gets me really excited. But first, we've been typing S up until this point, which searches everywhere after the cursor. So if I go to line 18 and I search for CH, SCH, it's not gonna point out the occurrences of CH on the line above and two lines above where my cursor's at because it only searches to the right and below of where my cursor is. If I wanna search above and to the left, I can do capital S. So if I do capital S CH, I can search for occurrences of CH above where my cursor is. The feature that gets me really excited is that you can jump across splits. So let me open two more vertical splits here. Okay, this is a little tight with three vertical splits, but it doesn't matter, you don't need to actually read the code. To search in other splits, you can prefix S with G. So I can do GS, and then ST, and you can see I get labels in both the middle and the right splits. So I can just pick whatever label I want and I'll jump to that split to the location I'm trying to go to. So say I wanna to jump to line 18 in the middle split. I do the label S, boom, I'm there. 
So not only did I jump to the split that I wanted to jump to, I jumped to the place in that split that I wanted to go to. And that can save a ton of keystrokes. If you think about doing Control W H or Control W L to get to the split that you're trying to go to, and then from there doing a search or a line jump to try to get to what you're going to, this can save a ton of keystrokes. The other feature that might come in handy is if you want to jump to the last character of a line, you basically just pretend that there's a space after that character. So if I wanted to jump to the semicolon three lines below the line my cursor's at, I would just do S semicolon and then space. And then the label is N, so I type N, boom, I'm on that semicolon. I know some of you are thinking, what about the case where it runs out of letters in the alphabet? Well, it has you covered there too. I haven't actually seen this scenario arise in practice, but it's easy to come up with a contrived example where we have like many occurrences of the same pattern. Say I wanna to jump to an occurrence of CH and I have a bunch of occurrences of CH before the one I'm trying to get to. I can do SCH and you can see some of the labels are red and some are blue. This is the concept of groups. So there's groups of labels and you can cycle between them using the space and the tab keys. The labels in red are the ones that you're gonna to jump to if you type the given character. So if I were to type the letter X, I'm in one of the occurrences of CH in that first group of targets. If I do SCH and a space, you can see the second group of targets is highlighted and I can jump to something in that group, so N. Again, space and tab to go back and forth between groups of targets. That's a quick rundown of the Leap plugin for NeoVim. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I'm curious what all you think. Let me know in the comments whether you think this is a great plugin or whether you think it's redundant. Maybe there's something better that is already out there that I don't know about. Let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.